today uh, we are going to be, we are actually, um, normally this would be the Maw of Mike, but we are, uh, due to some scheduling changes, we are, we are here tonight and we're going to be painting some unicorns. Um, so uh, last time we, we were here, we were painting, um, we were painting our, like our little bears and our boars. Um, and I said, Hey, you know, we'll, we'll do some pastels. We'll paint some unicorns. Um, and then, um, so here we are, we've got the, uh, whiz kids unicorn. I actually have two. Um, we're going to kind of paint these semi identical to each other. Um, one of these is going to have like a pretty kind of standardish paint color from what I've been planning. Uh, the other one may be a little free form because there is uh, there is the channel point that you can redeem um, or you can redeem channel points to pick a color, um, which is how we got our psycho bear a couple of weeks ago. And I just realized I'm holding the models off camera. Um, so uh, you can use that redeem your channel points if you got them. Uh, but today we are going to paint a unicorn. Um, if anybody has played in or run um, the uh, DCC RPG uh, module, Queen of Elfland's Son, there is a unicorn uh, that is in that module. Um, so spoilers if you haven't run it. Uh, but the unicorn has been twisted and is angry and violent. So we are going to... Um, paint this one skin like you kind of might expect sort of pastels bright colors and then we are going to finish it off um with some blood spatter uh because this this unicorn is out for blood um and has already been um been on the killing spree by the time the players uh, come across it so what i'm thinking for this is we're going to start with the the reaper uh these are all three reaper paints um, the Malvernian purple, it's kind of a nice sort of pastel purple. And then we're going to, um, mix it with some of like the bright skin shadow to sort of fill in some of the recesses. Um, and we're, we'll kind of slowly work our way up to uh, a highlight of the Ashen Rose. Um, I haven't figured out what I want to do with the hair yet. Uh, the hair may be like, I've got some kind of pastel-y greens over here. So this uh, this vertigris um, glaze from Vallejo, uh, maybe we'll do that, um, or maybe I've got some like pale pinks from Monument Hobbies. But I'm just gonna go ahead and so, kind of get started with our colors. So I've got our good old wet palette over here, and I'm just gonna kind of put a pretty big glob of this purple on here since this is gonna be our base color. Um, for at least one of the unicorns. And I'm going to put a, another kind of fairly large glob of the Ashen Rose. Um, I'm going to put some also here just in case I want to sort of mix the colors. Um, so if I, if I want to kind of see where my colors are with each of the different colors that I'm using in a sort of triad here, uh, we can go ahead and do that. This one. Oh, no, I need a pokey bit. Don't mind me, just doing uh, some repairs on the paint bottle. And where's a paper clip? I had a pokey bit for this, and I don't know where it is. I made the mistake of uh, I, I was doing like a little resin experiments and i had mm -hmm. inks and i made the mistake of cutting the tip off because i didn't realize that's the reason why they put a push pin in the packet <laughs> was to poke the top so i cut the top off and then i was wondering why the heck is this leaking whenever i like you know have it sitting out oh oh <laughs> <laughs> that explains it <laughs> Uh, 
That is. Okay, that's why. That's pretty solid up in there. Come to brush hour for painting. Stay for paint bottle repairs. That's right. You know what we can do now that I have the paint pot open is I can just scoop a little bit of this out here and then just put that right onto my palette. Could do this with a brush. Uh, I'm just going to... Oh, man, that's... All right. Just going to get a little bit. There we go. Yeah, Nix, that is one from your paint box. Um, I don't know where either of our pokey bits are. Paint's still good, it just dried in the cap. All right, so I think, like I said, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with the... I'm going to start with the purple. So, um, just like with uh, with last time, um, with the bear, uh, where we were using a an army painter um, uh, monster brush. Uh, actually, I have a new one, uh, just because the other one, um, there's nothing wrong with it. it, needs to just get washed, but I have a new, new brush, so we're going to break it in. Um, so, now that I've got my wet palette ready to go um i'm just gonna start i'm just gonna load up that brush here with some of that purple that off to the side and because this is our base coat we're just gonna kind of put it on to the model um, actually i could probably load up a little bit more but we're just gonna start painting the uh, large kind of flat spots of this unicorn. Uh, good evening, Dice Station uh, Zebra. Thanks for coming back. Saw you in the chat for uh, Brad's stream. This is probably something we're going to have to do a couple of coats on just to get a nice, like, purpley under, uh, like undercoat for this. Um, just because it's real thin. Um, we're also uh, kind of, you know, we're, we're using the um, the pre-primed part of these WizKids minis, uh, which is not always the best. They do kind of vary in quality, um, which is why it's always a good idea that even if you buy pre-primed minis or minis that don't require primer, like your Reaper Bones or the WizKids uh, minis is to always just it's always a good idea to give them a good uh, even if it's a quick one a good primer um, whether it's brush on spray can airbrush if you're feeling fancy so I think a lot of what my idea with this unicorn is going to be is to get the get the shadows real nice and purpley um, and then just kind of build up to that ashen rose, which is a real nice pale pink. I'm not going to be super, super neat with any of the parts that are touching the mane, uh, the tail, or the the hair above the uh, the hooves, um, because I'm still going to have to clean all that up. So I might as well, since I'm not really using like contrast paints or like speed paints. I can always just go back over it with like a white or a gray um, if I need to sort of reset the color tone. Might do, might hold off on the horn. Um, I might do it with an iridescent paint. Yeah, I've got this crystal cavern um, from a, a company called Turbo Dork. Um, Takes a couple of bases or a couple of layers to really make it sparkle, um, but there a lot of their paints are um, color shifting or iridescent. Um, the 
crystal cavern uh, that's here is a, as I'm sitting here, um, gives you this nice sort of like color shifting icy blue uh, that you can see on this dragon, which really throws off my white balance. But um, you can kind of see it on the wing as I move it. So I think that as the base of the horn um, and then splatter that with uh, some fake blood. I think that'll be real nice. What a name for a company, though. Turbo Dark? Yeah, yeah, they're great. I love it. They, um, they've got, like, uh, a lot of just these color-shifting paints. Um, their website's really great, because it'll give you an idea of, like, what kind of base or what it looks like, depending upon the base that's underneath it. Um... They're a real, uh, real nice company. I, I almost had a chance to work with them either last January or the January before um, with uh, with like painting minis on stream and using a lot of their paints. Uh, but just timing and everything didn't really work out. So, um, but they're, they're a great company. They did have to retire uh, a few of their paints because the, um, the recipe was just not consistent in quality, unfortunately. Um, just it was just the recipe was just real finicky. Um, so they were like, "Well, we're gonna retire it and bring out a new color that's a similar shade with a very good, you know, it's a lot more consistent, a lot higher quality." Um, I unfortunately, uh, thankfully, thankfully, some stores around me carry them, but I cannot order them. Um. I cannot order them directly at the moment uh, because it is cold here. So uh, if these were to get like left outside my house or in my mailbox for a few hours, all of the pigmentation that causes the color shift separates and I basically just wasted my money. Um, so I only order them in like it, when I do, if I have a need for them. Um, I really only consider about ordering them during like the summer. But thankfully, a couple of stores in my area do have um, do do stock them. This is a purpley unicorn. Like I said, gonna have to probably just do two coats on this, uh, just to make sure that everything gets a nice even coverage. suppose I could probably just do like real stark white for the um for the hair maybe tint it with some blue what uh what were you expecting um when uh when I was talking about pastel unicorns like a like a light pink and just work my way up to white from there oh, man completely see on the back of this uh back of the leg just miss this whole section of the unicorn's leg one of the things that like a, a horse model like this really like lets you do realistically any kind of animal that where the the fur would be um fine so you don't get a lot of the uh like patterns that we had with the bear and the boars is this lets you do a lot of like blending um uh, on the model to get like really nice transitions, uh, which is not something I'm great at, but this is something that we can kind of spend our time doing on this type of model because we just sort of have that ability um, where we can just kind of like slowly work these colors up to where we want and just we have enough like dark spaces and, and kind of crevices because of the muscles uh where we can just sort of leave it darker leave it more purple um we can just sort of kind of take our time all 
All right, so I'm almost done with the base coat on this guy. Uh, you can see, um, kind of see down here by where the, the hoof uh, or the hair above the hoof starts is you can see kind of how what one coat of the purple looks like. Um, let's see, actually, with this, this might make that a little bit easier to see. Yeah. Um, so this is a, um, you can see it, you can still see some of the primer color coming through. Uh, but as we kind of move up the horse or up the unicorn, you can see that that two layers of that purple, um, does a really nice job in terms of coverage and getting us that base coat that we really, really kind of need. Um, with something like this unicorn, Kind of want to make sure, though, that we do use um, thin coats uh, because if we just kind of glob the paint on, um, it's going to show our brush marks and on something as sort of like flat as uh, as the unicorn um, or as like the, the body of the unicorn, it's going to show our brush strokes. We can't really hide it with things like washes or real kind of stark highlights. Oops. Completely forgot to get the underside of the head. Just going to be a little tricky. Probably not going to do too much down there anyways, because one, it's going to be a tricky spot to get. Uh, and two, it's already going to be kind of shadowed anyways. So we may just kind of want to leave it that way. Because again, we want this to look good on the table, but we don't we don't want to spend a bunch of time on it. Generally speaking. All right. And give that guy a little, little moment to dry. You can already sort of tell uh, kind of how purpley it is. Um, let's see. All right. So one of the next things that we want to do is we want to kind of start to work on kind of the mid-tones. So the sort of the, not lazy, but I guess the very quick way to do it would be to just go straight from the purple to the um, to the the what is that the bright skin shadow, um, but that's gonna leave it's gonna be real stark. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to just move, kind of combine the paint a little bit. Um, I'm doing a very small amount here. I'll probably move a lot more in a minute. Yeah. And get it sort of the to the shade that I want, which is kind of at this point a cross between the two of them. Um, though I'm going to keep bringing more of the bright skin shadow over here, and then just so I've got some to play with with the purple, and then we're going to bring this back to our model, and we are just going to kind of start to pick out the kind of the highlights so this is um and see kind of like the muscle structure is really what i'm just trying to hit uh with the with um with this paint so just making sure that the recesses are left purple and that the Kind of the higher parts are still um, the combination color. And because I painted this with purple, my eyes are having a difficult time seeing what needs to be painted. So if the model seems like it's at a weird angle, or if my voice suddenly sounds different, it's because I'm much closer to this than I normally am. And here I go, forgetting to, you know, make sure I'm on camera. The wonderful background of my cutting mat must be most 
uh, hype uh, footage on Twitch. Oh, it's the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to your question earlier about uh, what Nick's expected of the uh, the unicorn, um, they said that they painted the unicorn, or they painted a unicorn, a very pale gray, just so it wasn't super white. And then did its hair in a pastel blue with blue, like, intense blue eyes. Okay. I mean, th that is, like, if I was trying to just sort of get it, get this done, that's probably what I would do as well. Um, Just because, like, that's what most people think of when they think of a, of a unicorn. Um, but I went digging through their paints because uh, they, they keep their paints at my place. And I was like, ooh, this looks like this would be some good pastels. Um, and I think it would make for an interesting unicorn. I mean, eventually we are probably going to be in a very similar boat with their kind of off gray. So it's not just white, white. Um, but it'll be it'll be that bright. Um, uh, so it'll be that kind of bright pink, uh, pale pink. Okay, let's see, had a blue and white themed mage to go with it. Okay, yeah, that tracks. All right, let's go ahead and just kind of keep putting this on. This is one of the things that, like, we've talked about before is just sort of, like, the steps of painting. Like, how you can do, essentially, like, a, a base coat, a dry wa or um, a wash, and then, like, a dry brush. Um, this is going to be a little bit more like intense or I guess more, a little more time consuming because we're actually trying to go for some like gradients and some highlighting. Uh, and a lot of that is just because it's actually a pretty good model for this. It's got a lot of like crevices and spots where we can really play with like the shadows and the lights. Like the front of the uh, the back leg here um, works really well because you can build the the color of the this edge here really bright, um, and the shadows inside will stay nice and dark because it's pretty deep down in there. I'm, as long as I'm being careful, I'm not going to get paint on it. He said probably moments before he got paint on it. And one of the things that, like, a lot of, I don't know, like, professional painters will tell you is, like, one of the things that we're doing here is we're essentially, we're it's called glazing for the most part. My paint's probably a little too thick for it to really be considered glazing. But what we're doing is we're going to, we're using the paint to build up pigmented layers um, as we as we paint now with thicker paints or with something that we're trying to do very quickly this can be done with like one or two coats um and then like a wash a dry brush and a highlight or, or a highlight and a dry brush uh but this this is as you can tell like it's the color hasn't changed much there's not a lot of pigmentation on my paintbrush but you can tell that the color is slowly changing. And we're still kind of working with the um with the monster brush just because we have a lot of uh, uh a lot of um areas still to play with, but as we get to like more and more um like fine areas that's when I'm probably going to break out like a smaller brush uh, to make sure that I can keep these highlights kind of the way I want them. I say that, but I'm still here. These kind of tiny parts, it's working out pretty well.
And as I'm getting like closer to the hair, one of the things that you can do is leave a little bit of space between the skin uh, or the fur in this case of where you're painting and the hair. So there's a little bit of that undercoat or that that base coat underneath it so that you're still just kind of creating shadows and working your way up and just kind of leave yourself a little bit of space, a little bit of room so that it um, it has it has like, you know, you're not covering everything you painted fully. But you are still kind of getting in there and getting all of the coloring that you want. And also you're going to see, I'm probably going to struggle with some of these mold lines on the uh, the ears and the hair a little bit. Um, is sort of the one major problem uh, with the WizKids minis is they've got a lot of mold lines to deal with. Kind of going back and just sort of highlighting or hitting some of the other spots that I just want to make sure I have color on so that when I go back for second and third coats, I know where I'm where I want that paint. Apologies to everyone who is expecting Ma of Mike tonight. Uh, he uh, he will be back next Monday. Um, at this same at this time, and you won't have to deal with me. But what Find if out. we like the painting? <laughs> oh well, if, if I, unfortunately we're a package deal. <laughs> I think then if my math and my ability to read a calendar is correct, there's only one more brush hour of the year. Uh... Be the week after. It'd be like the week before Christmas. Yes. Unless I am wildly incorrect or you are saying goodbye. I am going on vacation. Uh, no, Um, actually... The week before Christmas is Spellburn, but ah, okay. what I was going to say, and I was actually going to save this for after the stream, but you know, <laughs> I mean, we can talk about it now if you want, but That's I fine. was going to say, um, since tonight was the last episode of uh, In the Studio, you're welcome for the rest of the year to take his 7 p.m. spot. And oh. do your show at 7 p.m. So you could do it before Maw of Mike next week and before Spellburn the week after. And then after that, yes, I'm on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was not expecting that. Um, I should be able to. Got to run it by the uh, by the old uh, manager, i.e. my wife. But, <laughs> but I yep. should be all right. Came for the painting. Well, shucks. That makes me feel. That makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Are you sure that's Just, not what you ate for dinner? It could be. We we did have we did have uh, chicken and mole sauce. That sounds good though. It was really good, <laughs> but it is. It was a little spicy, and as much as I am loath to admit it, my body. Um, does not like spicy food the way it once did five years ago. You know, I strangely find that I enjoy spicy food now more than I did five years ago, and I don't understand what happened. I'm going to blame COVID for this wonderful problem. <laughs> <laughs> But I have realized that it's only certain spices. If you don't do Cajun right, Cajun is still, like, Ooh. it's not spicy. It's just not good. <laughs> I 
Cajun sounds great. Uh, I love, I make this uh, one pot Cajun chicken um, mm -hmm. pasta thing, and whoo, I might add a little too much cream cheese, uh, but I also just, I like cheesy things, but uh, it is, it is one of my favorite things to make when I make it. It just takes a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only problem. It's like you got to boil down the uh, the broth and the tomato juice and, and cook the pasta in it before you can actually get in there with, with the actual cream cheese. And that just that's the part that takes forever. And I'm just like, I just want to eat. You smell so good. Just let me eat. It's a problem with like one pot dishes or slow cooker dishes. Mm-hmm. That's a little bit too much water. really just be lazy and not really paint the underside here who's gonna check certainly not me yeah because i know gonna, i was gonna say but then you're gonna know that it's not and then yeah. how much it's it's really how much do you care <laughs> on this yeah. unicorn surprisingly a lot i I'm I'm really enjoying how this is starting to come together and we haven't been at it that long. No. When you started putting that purple on there, I went, oh boy, that's that's a <laughs> that's a purple. That's a bold choice. <laughs> that's a big purple. And then you started mm -hmm. adding this like mid tone. I went, okay, yeah, no, now I can see it. It's it's all right. Yeah. I mean he's gonna it's gonna get brighter. It's it's going to look real weird for a while. And it may even look weird when it's done. But I, it's a unicorn. Well, let's do bold choices, right? I'm not going to lie. I was starting to think you were making a, a Lisa Frank unicorn. Oh, so. if, I had a, if I had any of that sort of talent, we might. But I, <laughs> I do not. So I could have left the underside of the front leg a little bit darker. I may not do a second coat with that. Just to kind of leave it a little more in shadow. But I think I need the front of the legs to get a little bit more. Let's get a little bit more on the neck here. Doesn't feel like I got as much color and pigmentation there as I did in other spots. That's going to bother me. Let's get up here, top of the eye. And top of the head. Whoop. Come on, document camera, focus. You can do it, buddy. I believe in you. All right. So I'm just kind of giving this a little once over uh, just to see anything where I can add a little bit more of our midtone. I think I can do that on the front here. Uh, just a little bit, kind of going up towards the base of the where the neck meets the head but stopping ever so slightly so that sort of stays in the shadows there not the smoothest transitions but that's all right we're we're playing around i think I think that's good for our first coat. Um, I'm going to do a second coat. 
just to make it a little bit, um, just to kind of fill it in a little bit more, but I'm not 100% certain. I may, so I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to bring the the mid-tone color that we've made, which I almost feel like I could just plop a little bit of that purple over here into the bright um, skin shadow here. Kind of make this color and then bring it towards the drop in, of the ashen rose in the middle. And then slowly just kind of keep adding more and more of the ashen rose until I get like the highest highlight color. So I'm going to do that. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to have kind of a think on the uh, on the second unicorn. Because my thought process with these two originally is because because I'm kind of pulling from uh, King of Elfland's son, where they call it a sealy unicorn. So like, or sorry, an unsealy unicorn. Um, I think I might do them. I was originally going to do them sort of identically, similar paint schemes, um, but cover one with blood and gore and the other one not. But I don't know. We'll see. Add in color to these areas. And as I'm doing that, you can see I am may not be hitting all of the exact same areas that I did last time. Might be hitting more as I kind of sort of lock in the shadows. So if I want that shadow to be a little thinner, if I want it to be a little, you know, not as thick. You do different color schemes. Well, that's fair. I'm not opposed to doing different color schemes. Um, I think it would be really weird. Well, I don't know. This one is... The Ashen Rose is still pretty pretty pale. You could easily say it's more of a cooler tone, so like kind of a winter tone, despite the fact that we're painting with purples and like warm skin tone colors. The real question is, what cutie mark am I going to put on these guys? Because <sighs> that that would be a way to make my players feel bad about dying to a unicorn. I've been sitting here wondering if you were going to make a cutie mark <laughs> comment. And, I totally did. and I'm, I don't know whether to be to laugh out loud or be disappointed. I'm <laughs> somewhere in between. <laughs> um, I mean, you can you can be disappointed and it wouldn't be the first time oh. someone's been doing <laughs> but at the same time um i mean it's a it's a unicorn it's a purple unicorn even oh, well it's purple at the moment and i think it would be hilarious to watch a party of reavers just get demolished by a bloodthirsty unicorn with like balloons on its uh on its side <laughs> just a really really bad smiley face emoji <laughs> um what about the uh the watchman smiley yes <laughs> like a little bit of blood splatter on uh -huh. it uh-huh yeah <laughs> Nick says Twilight Sparkle could never. Yeah, because she is too busy with high school or whatever. I don't know. I don't watch the show. I don't either. Honestly, I've heard it's not bad. It's just the cutie mark thing is just so bizarre to me. <laughs> I uh, worked with a guy who... Um, Self-described as a as a fan of the show, uh, and he had thoughts and opinions about when it jumped the shark, <laughs> which is a thought, which is a phrase I never thought I would hear in my uh, professional career. Yeah, 
I could see if maybe I went into like academia and had to, um, cause like originally I went to college for high school education. Um, and I, I could see if I would have had a student that would have maybe tried to, you know, write a book report on it. Yeah, I'm with Nick's on this one. It's pretty messed up that in Ponyland, they all have faded professions determined by the marks that they get. Why? Why do you have a Why do you have a domino mask and a uh, uh, a bag of money on your as your mark? <laughs> well, you see, stick them up. I'm here to rob you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I went. I went. They were going to be a dealer at a casino. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> <laughs> Robin's my life. <laughs> oh. Why do you have handcuffs on your uh on your rear end? Stick them up. <laughs> <laughs> we're put we're taking you to the clink. Yeah. <laughs> It's when you find out that Ponyland has a uh, has no criminal justice system, and yeah. <laughs> like, wait, what? Cops, cops and robbers means a whole new thing when uh, when you're little ponies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a magic mushroom for the last I just time? Really I like Mario. <laughs> Really big fan of Chris Pratt. You know, I did watch the movie. Not the yeah. worst thing I've ever seen. There, there are a lot of movies that I would describe as the worst thing that I've ever seen, and I, I haven't seen Mario, but it made a bunch of money. Yeah, so it I can't mean, be it can't be all bad. Yeah, I didn't personally throw any money at at them, but uh, we watched it on something. I don't remember, but, uh, but we, uh, my roommate and I watched it and I went into it completely skeptical thinking, oh, I'm like, I'm probably not going to like this. It's not going to be that great. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised, um, that though there were bits of it that were stupid <laughs> just because, uh, that's just the plight with modern movie writing nowadays, but it, it, there was decent voice acting, and some of the jokes were pretty good. Jack Black is a is always fun. I I am off for a good chunk of the rest of the year, so I may find myself uh, watching that. Though the movie I really want to watch at the moment is Godzilla minus one. Ah uh, yes. It looks really good. <laughs> I just want there to be a good kaiju movie. I mean, did you see Shin Godzilla? No, I haven't seen that. Oh, one. is you, that one a good one? Uh, it's really good. Okay. I mean, it's it is. Um. So, um, the the directorial duo is Hideki Anno. Um who did the anime Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, but he did, he worked with, I uh, can never remember this guy's name, which is a shame because um, he's, he re he's really good with like practical effects. Um, but he directed, and this is, this is going to sound awful. He directed the live action Attack on Titan movies that they did. They did two of them, which covered like the first act of, act of that show. Or first arc of that show. Okay. Um, a lot of really good practical effects in there. He and Anno did a very, very like prototypical, um, jet, like early Godzilla style film. So you see Godzilla all the time, like throughout the movie, several times. He's blowing things up. He's destroying things. But like half the movie is the government trying to figure out what to do about Godzilla. Hmm. Um, which is, like, seeing the human element in Godzilla films is always something that I really like. Um, and 
Um, it's it's a really good one. Uh, it came out around the time of the like Universal um, Godzilla films, like I think 2015 or 2016. Okay. Um, and he uh, he went on to also do like Shin um, Ultraman and Shin Kamen Rider. So if you ever watched either of those shows growing up or um, in in adulthood. Uh, he went and did basically like darker, gorier versions of those shows, which were, you know, originally for kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, Godzilla minus one is also supposed to be really good. Uh, it's not by it's not by Ano, mm-hmm. um, but that yeah, that's supposed to be really good. And then I guess if um, I haven't checked it out yet, but if you have Apple TV, um, Monarch is a Godzilla TV series. Interesting. Which, yeah. <laughs> um I have a, I've had a couple of friends that have watched it and they have said that it's uh it's pretty good. Okay. So, it's probably another one of those things that I will check out when I am off work for the rest of the year. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So, I've got my second coat down. Um, you can really kind of start to see where the uh, the highlights and the shadows are going to start filling in. Um, and I'm mixing up sort of our beginning of our highlight colors. Um, I think I'm actually going to switch to a smaller brush on this um, because I want a little bit more fine control on some of the spots here. Uh, so I'm just going to go to the uh, army painter standard brush uh, it's a smaller tip um it's one of the ones that i use pretty regularly but we're going to uh mix up some of this oops, some of this uh highlight tone if i can wet my brush appropriately and just kind of work in the color that i want which is about there and start highlighting So one of the things that, because this is the first of our like highlight layers, um, I could wet this out a little bit more, make it a little thinner, so that you just like with the the first sort of mid tone color, um, it doesn't fully pigment everything underneath it, and we can start to kind of push the paint around uh, and make sure that the kind of the areas that we want are getting the highlights that we want. And this is going to look this is going to look really janky for the uh, the first layer or so. Um because just like with the mid-tone color, it's uh it's thinned down, there's not a whole lot of pigment in it, but we're kind of just blocking out those highlights a little bit more than we did with the the mid-tone. Yeah, related to uh to those kaiju movies, I I yeah more kaiju bring bring back giant monsters, and not rampage starring Rock the Dwayne Johnson. So that movie was not great. <laughs> yes, John the Dwayne Roxon. A little bit too much. Yeah, it's starting to look a lot more pastel. It's kind of what I was hoping the uh, that ash and rose would start to do. We're going to build this up a couple of layers um, so that it's really just like the ash and rose is really what we'll see at the highlights. Um, and if I feel we need to, uh, we will probably um, take it even higher with like Ash and Rose and just a little bit of white. Or gray, I guess, if we really didn't want to like go full, full brightness on it. All right, so you can kind of see it's 
as Nick's uh, in the chat said, uh, it's starting to look a little bit more pastel. Um, let's see. It's just got a kind of problem of doing the way I'm doing this is I have to mix up the paint kind of as I go. But we're getting there. All right. So we're just going to kind of, you know, build this up. Oh, that is way too much. It's about what color that I want, but that's way too much paint on the brush. So we're just going to kind of take the brush, just load it with a little bit of water to thin the paint out on the model before it dries to really kind of get it into the spots that we want it to. Just kind of the basics of glazing. I am so curious what Nyx is going to do for the other unicorn. Oh, goodness. They are super excited about speaking yeah. points. <laughs> and they haven't, they haven't given me any sort of indication, so mm -hmm. I will be just as surprised as you. Could just take my sweet, sweet time on this and then... Make them wait until next week. <laughs> but that would be... That feels mean. Alright, so... It's starting to get right about where I want. In terms of what's underneath. And you can really... Take... And just see sort of how far we've come from that bright purple uh that we had now it's getting a lot more pale um and i think so i mentioned we might need like two coats but i don't know i don't think that's going to be the case i'm just going to kind of pick out a few other spots just sort of make sure i've got kind of the basics of what i want i'll probably dry brush the ears because that'll be easier part of the i mean the face still needs like the face has eyes that I'm still going to paint. I haven't figured out what color I want the eyes to be yet. Um, oops. A little bit there I can do. Doesn't help that the face is where like most of my mold line issues were. Purple is on is severe on the unicorn's left side of the face. Is it? Doesn't seem that way. Unless I am not seeing something you're seeing. Uh, maybe it's just the color balancing. That could be it. That is that is a fair possibility. All right. All right. So let's let's bring our colors back. Um. I think we're actually let's do just the tiniest bit of purple. Yeah, I think we're gonna do mostly uh, the ashen rose, a little bit of the purple as just one kind of final transition before we do the ashen rose. Oops, that is too thick. Yeah, the problem is, is I know that as we work towards this like pastel pink is that the color balancing is going to make this look more and more washed out. So we are going to run into some color issues. That is something I wish I had a better way to resolve.
there is always that kind of little bit of satisfaction that I have because I'm seeing it in person is that I'm like, okay, this looks good. Or this is what I'm attempting to achieve. Zoom does some weird things to my camera. I've been been giving some thoughts to the next couple of brush hours, like what what to paint, what to do. Eventually, I'm going to have a bunch of these that are just ready to be based. So we'll spend an evening talking about basing, making your models match your dungeon, or how to make them kind of generic. If uh, you know, so everything sort of has the same feel. But I think. I think in keeping with the horse theme, uh, I've got a nightmare model that might be interesting to paint, especially because I want to do something kind of interesting with the paint that I have. Um, so Games Workshop and their Citadel paint line makes a technical paint called Mordant Earth, which doesn't really mean anything um, to, I guess, anyone that doesn't play a lot of Warhammer 40k. Uh, but the technical paint line is their paints that do stuff. So uh, last time we were we like we were here, uh, we used the technical paints on the uh, from Vallejo um, on the uh, eyes and the tongue of the psycho bear. Um, the Mordant Earth technical paint is a crackling paint. So it's going to crack and break when you paint it onto the model. So I think what I'm going to do is um, paint the Nightmare in like flame colors and then uh, cover it in Mordant Earth big globs of it and watch it all kind of crack and dry and see if that gives us a really cool effect. That sounds like it'd be awesome. <laughs> we've got we've got another half hour or so on this great ape. So you you are here um you get to see a lot um Probably one one more layer of this kind of pastel paint. Um, and then I, gotta, I still haven't figured out what I want to do for the hair. Um, so if somebody has hair suggestions, go ahead and use the channel points for it. Because I don't know what I want to paint this hair color. Or if you don't have enough channel points to do it, let me know and I will use uh, my channel points. All right, do I have a lavender? Uh, I don't think I have a lavender, so I guess the question, Nix, is do you have a lavender? Since your paints are also here. Turbo Dork's metallic lavender. Oh, that could be interesting. Hmm. Well, let me get a little bit more. Let me get another layer um, on of the Ashen Rose onto this unicorn. And maybe we take five at that point. Uh, just so I can go check. But at the same time, I might. Let's see. No, I do not have a lavender. The closest I have would be twilight purple or magenta. Maybe magenta mixed with like pale pink. But I do not have a actual lavender color. All right. So one of the things that I'm doing now, kind of going back with this second pass, Um, 
All right. So I see grapes question grape apes question. Um glad I caught the show. I uh, got the paint. The bottom he wait, rubbed the bottom on the mini with sandpaper. Did hold on, I gotta let me find a mini. Um Oh, to level it? Oh, okay. Um, so that really depends on the type of mini that it is. Uh, do you remember the material that it was made out of? Um, if it was metal, like if it was an old like Ral Partha mini or Grenadier mini, um, or maybe even a metal Reaper mini, it's possible he uh did the sandpaper to level it because um it was a metal one. Okay. So do I have a metal mini nearby? Uh, I do. All right. So let that unicorn think for a second. Okay. So this is this is a metal mini. Um, this is from a uh, DGS Games. Um, they make a they make a game called Free Blades. Um, I've actually been looking at their models again because they look like perfect for kind of the DCC vibe of this is a guy in armor with a shield and he looks like he just got like done with his funnel. So on the bottom of this mini is this metal tab. Now the metal tab was one to help with the casting process. Two, a lot of bases that were made because of this casting process have these slots in them. Um, the slots are, uh, they're not in vogue, I guess, anymore. They're not, you know, you don't see a lot of slotted bases anymore. Um, and so some of the things that happen is if you need to attach this to a base without a slot, you have to clip the uh, the slot, the tab off of the bottom of the mini, uh, which can cause a couple of things to happen. First, you clip it wrong and you accidentally cut his foot off. Um, or if you clip it higher, so... Like, if I have my clippers, and I'm not going to clip this guy, because uh, I'm just going to re-glue him to this base. But if I clip above, and I leave some of the tab on, I have to remove it. Um, the dangerous way, which is the way that I do it, is I will then, to kind of level that stuff out, uh, I will use my hobby knife. I'll just, like, take my hobby knife and do what every... Um, Boy Scout instructor told me not to do it, and I pull the knife towards me um, to kind of even out the, the flash, is what it's called. Um, the sand paper is actually an ingenious idea. I don't know why I've never thought of it, but by taking and um, and taking the mini onto some sandpaper, you can, you know, smooth it out, and you don't you don't have to worry about it being, you know, not level which will then allow it to glue to the base appropriately, which means you can then, uh, once you've glued it to the base, you can then, um, and it's level, you can then uh, make sure that he's like, your mini is standing up and not as, and isn't like leaning side to side. Um, prepping the mini, how much time you should spend on it really depends. Um, so for the unicorns, they had mold lines uh, running down the center. You can actually still kind of see it on uh, the hair here. Um, you can see kind of how there's like a little weird eh, it's a little line, a little hard to see. Um, but the mold line is really what you generally want to take care of when you're prepping the mini. Because um, that all, if your paint is kind of, if you use a wash or something, the paint's going to get caught or the wash is going to get caught on that mold line. So for these unicorns to prep for tonight, I spent probably about 15, 20 minutes um, working on the mini. Uh, just making sure that I had the mold lines taken care of. And then uh, Elena can vouch when um, this, when our call for tonight's show started. Um, I was going in and I was working on some mold lines on the this mini because there was one right on the leg. There was another one on the face and I was just trying to clean up the mini. Um, other minis, you may not have to prep as much. Um, 
in like kind of same, same, uh, similar vein. Um, this uh, uh, this iron golem. Uh, I didn't do any prep work on. I didn't. I kind of just did a look up, like a once over on it, and it was like, okay, the mold lines are either not in places where they're going to bother the uh, the the paint job, or I didn't think they were bad enough. Um, so I scraped it or I shaved it. So usually when I'm prepping a model, I will either have this, uh, my hobby knife or my utility knife. Um, and I will either not do it on that one. Cause that's got paint on it. Um, I will either like kind of slowly pull the blade towards me. Um, or in with like softer materials, like these with kids minis, um, I will take the back of the blade and do that and just kind of uh, make a nails on a chalkboard sound um, to uh, to scrape the mold line. Um, sanding it is generally going to be your best bet. Um, because sanding is going to be a lot easier. Uh, you generally aren't going to do it on a primed model. Uh, but I have years of like bad habits built up, so I still use a hobby knife. Um the hobby knife has its own problems. Um, let me see. Actually, will this work? This will actually work real well. So this is a Chaos Warrior. Um, I'm actually going to be using him for a uh, Chaos Lord um, for like a uh, first like sailors on the start of the sea. Um, this little piece here on the side is from where it attached to the sprue. So normally when I'm building models because again I have like years of bad habits I will clip the sprue piece off and it's kind of hard to see uh, let's see if I can catch it in the light but there's a little bit of plastic um, still on the cape from where it connected to the sprue so a piece of sandpaper or a modeling sand stick um, is going to be probably the best way to kind of remove that is is to just take this and to just sand it until until it's gone um but me what i do is i come in and i go yoink and i just shave it towards me uh which works most of the time um and then other times uh, i will accidentally just take a chunk out of the plastic um, so it, it's the reason why sand, you usually want to use sandpaper is because sandpaper doesn't have the possibility of you taking a chunk out of the model or yourself. Um, but the, uh, using the hobby knife is just what I, what I've done, um, traditionally. And that's just sort of the bad habit I have. So Ideally, when you're prepping a mini, um, it's maybe take like five minutes um, and just sort of look at the miniature and just say, okay, like, where's my mold lines? You know, where's flash that I may need to go? And then um, just take sandpaper or a sanding stick um, to the material and uh, just kind of slowly work it away. You do all of that before you actually prime the model. Um, and um, you don't you don't really want to like rub them to a rough surface um, because you'll start to pull detail away. Um, you, what you really kind of want to do is um, is like take and realistically just like wash the plastic um again this is something i don't do but this is something that is recommended is just like wash them uh while they're still on the sprue so like let's see where's the sprue yeah really what we should have done um is i should just have had you on uh an episode of just hey how do you get started which maybe we'll do that in like the new year. All right. So this is a sprue of models. Um, take this and um, just 
wash it in like your sink little like warm soapy water you can use dawn you can use hand soap um we really just want to make sure that if there's any chemicals that were used to get the sprue out of the mold um or to get the model out of the mold that we are removing that um so it's always a good idea to to do that that will help your paint stick better um, because the usually the material that is on the, the sprues or on the models when you get them is a release agent, so it's going to be kind of non-stick to begin with. Um, it's not again, it's not something I always do uh, regularly because most of the models are either pre-primed like the WizKids ones that I have, um, or I've 3D printed them. Um, and as part of my 3D printing process, I'm already washing them in alcohol. So I usually don't then wash them in soap and water, which I probably should now that I think about it. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, just do like soap and water to wash them. Um, and then just like set them on paper towels and like let them dry for 24 hours. Uh, we generally, you just don't need to... Um, um, you don't need to like do anything. You can just like let them air dry. Uh, what is the best way to put them together? Always super glue, and how do you make them connect perfectly? Uh, so to that is a fairly uh good question. I mean, it is a good question. Uh, super glue generally is the safe bet. Um, some models it, but uh, the type of glue that you use really depends on the material. Um, so, um, I'm going to leave these sitting here and the other glue that I have is upstairs. Um, so that's all right. So, um, ignore the price tag. I never take these off cause I never need the price or never need to. Um, so for metal minis, um, and resin minis, the only glue that you're going to be able to use is super glue. Um, for other minis that use um, use basically like polystyrene, which is um, what you see most like Games Workshop models. Um, I think the WizKids Frameworks line uh, uses polystyrene, um, but it's going to be that kind of like darker gray. Uh, plastic that I was showing earlier uh, when talking about like washing the minis. Um, those you can use super glue on. Um, I use super glue on them all the time. I had for years. Uh, you can also use um, plastic glue uh, or uh, uh, Tamiya um, makes a plastic cement. Uh, Mr. Hobby does as well, which is just another company that makes it. Um, but the plastic cement or the plastic glue um, causes a chemical reaction with the plastic. So super glue reacts with air and it forms a bond with itself, essentially. Um, it holds the two pieces together, uh, but the weak point is obviously uh, where the super glue is held. Um, plastic glue, plastic cement will essentially melt the... Um, uh, the plastic cement will melt the minis or melt the plastic and then creates a weld essentially between the connection points. Um, so they do, they do kind of two different purposes. Um, you can just pretty safely always use super glue. If, um, if you don't want to worry about different types of um, glues, like, you know, okay, is this a metal mini? Is this a, um, is this a plastic mini? And you can just say, I just am going to use super glue. Um, most hobby, I mean, any super glue will work. Um, so you can go to your local hardware store and buy like Loctite super glue. Um, I used to use their gel glue for years. Um, you can go to your like your local hobby shop, um, your local friendly, your friendly local gaming store um, and pick up like Army Painters plastic glue. Um uh, Tamiya, uh, Cement, um, Mr. Hobby, uh, 
which you can order online, but I've also seen it at Hobby Lobby um, if you're in a pinch. Uh, but yeah, um, any type of glue, if you go with super glue, um, there is also... Uh, there is also this accelerator. Um, this is a, let's see if I can get this to show now. I've, uh, so this is called Instaset. Um, other companies may call it like zip kicker, um, or just essentially like I said, accelerator. This is a way to, um, basically instant, uh, bond the super glue. Um, what I do with the accelerator is I will put accelerator on like one side of the mini of the connection point and then the super glue on the other and then press them together. And then the bond happens and I get a model built much faster than if I waited for the super glue to uh, fully cure. Downside is, is the bond is not as strong. All right, how do you make them connect perfectly? That goes back to um, the, like, how do we uh, kind of clean the model? Do we sand it? Do we shave um, shave stuff? So if your connection points have pieces of the sprue between them or they're not smooth or they're not flat, uh, the connection piece or the connection point isn't going to work as well as you would like. Um, that can be that's mostly a uh, mostly just kind of getting used to it and building more models. Um, and also making sure that the model is of uh, a good quality on the sculpt um, and the casting process. So um, for example, uh, this Chaos Warrior is this Chaos Warrior is from Games Workshop. Um, he is kind of an older model kit, uh, but he's essentially like two pieces. Um, he's kind of like the front and the back and maybe the legs. Um, if the front and the back are not, um, if the front and the back are not smooth, they won't have good connection points, and so the bond won't uh, won't work as well. Uh, unfortunately, the best way to do that again is to go back to like sanding the the spots, sanding the connection points, um, and just making sure that they are um, as smooth um, and level as possible. So I hope that answers your questions, Great Bait. <laughs> you have more. Well, that's great because I hopefully have more answers. And well, uh, this is this a Pathfinder unicorn? Um, I. Th think it is uh so i know it's the whiz kids um it's the whiz kids unicorn i can't remember if it's in their dungeons and dragons their pathfinder their nolzers or their deep cuts line i think it's deep cuts um but whiz kids is basically making everybody's minis so uh this could basically just be a, a pathfinder unicorn and i'm just not remembering what the uh the clamshell said when i opened it Maybe this one isn't a Pathfinder unicorn, but this one is. I have too many unicorns. But yes, I do believe it is. I think it is the Pathfinder unicorn. Too many. The no such thing as too many unicorns. Uh, clearly, somebody was not here earlier when we were talking about fatalistic uh, professions with regards to unicorns. That's all right. We don't need to rehash that.
or too many unicorns um, could be a problem for my players. All right. Uh, when you're done with the mini, do you do anything to finish it? Uh, yeah, you do. Um, so you can uh, you can put like a clear coat on it. Um, I uh, I use the oh is it is it Tamia? I think it is. Um, I use or no, it's testers. I use testers. Um, yeah, it really depends on on like what you're going for. Um, so I use the testers matte varnish uh rattle can so it's like a little spray can um that i just when the model's done i just spray it um and it's uh it's good to go um if you want something to look glossy uh then you can use a gloss varnish um there is no no real detriment to it um so Putting the putting the varnish on it um, helps keep the the paint from chipping. So if I you know toss the unicorn or drop it on the floor, uh, there's a chance that my um, uh, my paint job gets chipped because it hit the floor. Um, it bounced off of like somebody's backpack, um, and it really uh, you know it can ruin the paint job. Uh, actually, this uh, this cleric here. Um, this is an old, uh, Wizards of the Coast mini. This was my paladin from when I was, uh, uh, the metal parts of this mini were a paladin from when I was a kid playing, you know, first learning Dungeons and Dragons and stuff. Um, you can see the, like, well, actually it's really hard to see, uh, but the cloak on the mini or, or the, t um, kind of the, the sash here is painted white, but there's chips all throughout it because, I never varnished this because I was, you know, 12. Um, he's going to be getting a, uh, a repaint in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'll probably do him for a brush hour. Um, but yeah, I just varnish them when I'm done. And um, if I want them to be glossy, like let's say it's I want a shiny night, um, I can do a, a gloss varnish. If I want a matte varnish, uh, most of the stuff that I do is matte finish. Um, because I just want to kind of pull any sort of gloss or shine from like my washes off of it. And then it'll protect it. Um, the only problem that you really have to worry about with um, matte varnishes is if you varnish um, at temperatures that are um, not ideal or if it's too humid or not humid enough um if you're kind of uh painting in or if you're varnishing in um suboptimal conditions for the varnish uh what can happen is the model can get frosted um so essentially what's happening is is you spray the 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 varnish onto the model and it kind of atomizes and starts to dry before it even hits the model so when that happens you really have like two choices um first choice is re like strip it and repaint it which nobody wants to do you just spent a lot of time on it um the second thing that you can do is wait for better conditions uh and then hit it with a gloss varnish um the gloss varnish usually because it's glossy it'll fill in the frosted parts you get another smooth finish on the model and then uh, you let that fully dry, fully cure, and then you go ahead and hit it with uh, your matte varnish again um, in better conditions. Uh, so that's really the only detriment to um, to varnishing your models is you might frost them. Uh, I will say um, I have not had uh, I've, I have not had any models frost on me, but I do live in a pretty uh, temperate part of the of the country, so. It is winter, so it is getting cold up here. All right. So I think at this point, um, he's not done, obviously, uh, but I'm at kind of like the final stages. Uh, this time, I'm just going in with just pure ashen rose 
and I'm just going to pick out the like highest points on our unicorn. So like the, the tops of the eyebrows, tips of the ears, um, the like the very top of the, the head. Um, and then I can just kind of pick things out and just say, hey, you know, this is the top part. This is the highest part of the model. So let's just do like a little bit of extra here. And then what I'm going to do is because I've painted the face of the unicorn purple, uh, I need to kind of reset it so I can paint the eye. And we're going to uh, probably paint it like a verdigris glaze that I showed much earlier in the stream. Um, and then I have to figure out what what color I'm doing for the hair. All right, so that's that is one purpley, um, one purpley unicorn. We started with purple. I think we've done a, um, I think we've done a pretty good job, um, with the with making a pastel unicorn. Though I think I just all right, so. So what do I think of the speed paints? Uh, I love them. Um, <laughs> uh, they are fantastic. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we did a we did the Knowles, the Wiz Kids Deep Cuts line, Dead Warlord, uh, with speed paints um, and contrast paints because I have both of them. Um, if you buy the army painter, if you're looking at picking up speed paints and you're dead set on buying army painter, make sure that you get 2.0. Um, so they made the branding really easy. So they speed paint 1.0 and speed paint 2.0. Um, very clearly marked at the top of the bottle or like next to the logo. Um, 2.0 is a reformulation. Um, because there were issues with 1.0 where it would reactivate um, when you tried to paint on top of it. So you you know you do this really nice speed paint job and you would you know go highlight or dry brush it and the um, the paint would just the the speed paint underneath would just reactivate and just like just turn back to wet paint. Um, this iron golem uh, here uh, I painted with Army Painter metallic speed paints. Um, I think they're really cool. Um, so I'm a big fan of speed paints in general. All right, so let me get my fine, fine, fine tip brush. Um, there you are. Uh, this is how tiny this tip is. Um, let's see if it'll work. Am I on camera? Maybe. Yeah. So this is how tiny this tip of this brush is compared to what I've been using. Um, so I'm going to do this really quick for the, uh, for the eyes on the unicorn. So very, very tiny tip. Um, and I'm just going to use just basically pure, uh, ashen rose. Um, and I'm going to get real close because I can't see this normally. And if I can't see it, then I can't paint it. So I'm just going to... Oh no, my brush head's splitting. Yeah, the um the speed paint reactivation was a pretty big thing that kind of hurt Army Painter when they were like first coming out. You basically couldn't use their red paint. Um, because that's like colors that are a pain in the butt to paint, that's what most people get. Um Red is one of them. Uh, their red is generally like pretty vibrant, um, but the uh, the speed paint reactivating meant that you couldn't really use it. All right. <sighs> oh, 
Unfortunately, uh, Nix, if you are still in the chat, I don't think uh, I'm going to get to the second unicorn today. Um, so it'll have to be on the next stream. Um, all right. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to prep for um, the next one or the next color. So I'm going to paint the eyes with this vertis, uh, vertigris glaze. Uh, Viejo's model color. <laughs> I don't know if it's explicitly your fault, Great Babe. Um, it the uh the coloring on the uh the layering on the unicorn took a little bit longer than I thought, and that's okay. That just means we can do it in um. Yeah, you know what? If you want to go ahead and um, tell me what you would like the fur the main fur color to be on the um. The other unicorn. I can uh, I can make sure that, um, I can make sure that I uh, I will have it ready for next time. All right, pick a color, any color, Nix. the color of the SMT Kelpie. Okay. I'm glad you are redeeming this now so I can do some research. All right. Um. Oh. Oh, that's a cool color. All right, let's see. You gotta look it up. Unfortunately, <laughs> my phone is in black and white at the moment because it thinks it's time for bed. Uh oh. All right, SMT Kelpie. Ah, that's like mint. Yeah, it's like a ghostly green. Yeah. Um, let me see. I don't know how well this will come up on my document camera, but uh, we'll just bring see how well this works with the phone. A ghost, yeah, that is, it's coming in a little bit more like foresty green on the camera, but this is like a kind of a light, almost minty green. It's a okay. sickly green. Yeah. We have the power of, of editing. Google. There we do, that too. <laughs> All I right. Can just throw something on the screen later. <laughs> um. So, let's see, I got three minutes. Um. You know what? We are going to. I'm going to use that. Uh, I'm going to use that same green here, uh, whoop, for the horn, and then I'm going to put that color shifting paint on top of it when it's dried. So give me like a real icy blue when it's done. Hopefully. Yeah, that's a very good color choice, Nix. All right. Unfortunately, I'm not that guy on TikTok that can make, can color match any color, but I will try my best. All right. So, horn has been base coated. Ugh. <sighs> Let's see. All right. So next week. <laughs> next week, we are going to start the. Uh, assuming it well, the next time on brush hour, <laughs> uh, which. Uh, yeah. So the next time on brush hour, we're going to start the sort of sickly ghostly green um, for my unicorn on the left. Um, I'm really happy basically kind of like where the color is for the one on the right. Um, I just need to come up with a color for its hair. And then, um, we are going to use this color shifting paint to, for the horn. Um, and then because this is basically our unicorn from, um, Queen of Elfland Sun, we are going to splatter it with some blood for the blood god. Um, which is a technical paint that is sticky, gross blood. 
Uh, it stays kind of a nice glossy color when it's done. Um, but that is going to have to wait until next time because we are out of time. Uh, our brush hour is up. Um, so uh, with that, um, it's obviously no other. there's no other shows tonight, but um, check out all of the really cool uh, streams that Goodman Games puts on. Um, play more games, have more fun, and I will see you all next time.